Did we ever determine if you guys were at Iowa State at the same time? I don't think so. I think we missed each other slightly. I came out in 04. 06. Okay. So, yeah. A little overlap. Yeah, a bit. Did you date the same girls? It's quite possible. At the count of three, say a name. One, two, Rachel, three. Jessica, Jennifer, and... <laughs> Every 90s girl ever. <laughs> My name is Nick Bellman with Van Construction. This is episode 14 of the Honest Truth Podcast. I'm sitting here today with Stephanie with Ven. And Asa Plum with Shift Collective. We're going to talk about all things shift and also collaboration between design and construction in our industry. <laughs> da, 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 da. What is your title? I don't even know your title. That's the funny part. Um, King Ding Ling. It's one of those things that everybody else in the office really has a defined title. Uh-huh. I don't because um, actually I need to send you the link. Uh, we just did a bio on me for our website as part of our blog, nice. like our featured, and uh, I just refer to myself as an architecturally inclined platypus. Okay, so I Asa am... Plum, Shift Collective, architectural platypus? <laughs> How does that sound, Matt? More than anything, I just, I, I wear so many hats uh-huh. that they just decided that it was just kind of like, we took the title, took completely off my card, because if I put business development, everybody thinks I just do BD. If we put project architect, they just think that because they can't reach out to me as uh, development. It starts mm-hmm. to pigeonhole me, but it actually has created an interesting opportunity for me to say, everybody's always looking at my card and they say, well, what do you do? And I get to talk about it a little bit. Right. So um, it's actually a little trick I learned in working with Dirt. They had Dirt Champion. I'm like, what the hell is a Dirt Champion? So it gave me an opportunity, so we just stripped it off. So I don't That's really brilliant. have a title. So don't just to go with the assumption. Yeah. Can we dig into why platypus for a minute, though? I know. Like, I don't know enough about a platypus to know why that makes sense. It's a duck-billed beaver. It's I mean, that, that's what tail, a platypus right? is, right? Well, it's kind of the interesting thing. Is like a, a, <laughs> I think of the cartoon the kids watch. It Phineas kind of is. Ferb. Perry. Yeah, Perry yes. the platypus. Uh, I like a platypus basically because it's a super hyper-adapted individual for its environment. It makes no sense anywhere else, but it's evolved to do specifically how it exists in this really weird place where it's kind of like between a duck, a beaver. It lays eggs. It's a mammal. But it actually glows under UV light too, so it's got some really. I don't weird know if it's it. more fascinating or more fascinating that you know this much about platypuses. Pie, 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 pie. pie. <laughs> don't say platypus. You can't say platypuses. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did in a meeting last week. That went over rather oddly. Um, Do they travel in a pack or individual? They're kind of they're uh, they're somewhat social, but they're kind of like social within their small group. They're not like hanging out, having platypus drinks and platypus. Do they build dams like beavers? That's what I'm wondering. Do they have more in the water? Don't more they not live by the water? water? Yeah, they do. They build like little. It's more nests. They don't build like big enclosures. They're more free flowing. Think about like an otter, more right. as far as like socially. Uh, yeah. But, do they hold um, hands when they sleep like otters? I don't actually know. Do they you have know a poison that? spur the on the back, thing. but I know about the poison spur, and they're only in Australia. Yes, and they lay uh, eggs, which is what? a weird for a mammal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, they're just, they're really odd. Like, if you take me and put me in another environment entirely, I don't make any sense. But if you leave me alone where I'm at, I'm pretty doggone useful. Well, is it because Shift is opening up the scope for you? Rather than saying, this is what you do, just be this. They're saying... I honestly think it was more of, we don't really know what this office is going to be. Okay. And um, my, my old friend, Zane, who is one of the founders of the company in Des Moines, they were trying to find somebody to head up the architectural office here uh-huh. and just kind of went out and said, okay, let's find somebody we can build an office around. We don't know what we want it to be. I gave him a few potential candidates and he ended up coming back and saying, what about you? you? I said, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. I said, well, just create something. And so that kind of leads into the I guess, attitude of, of both shift and of uh-huh. our office that we didn't come in this market with a preconceived notion. I've been here for 16 years. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like, let's meet with our clients, let's meet with our contacts, meet with the construction industry, real estate, and find out where the need is and where do we want to fit into this mm-hmm. and just kind of let it come together and not say, we're going to go with any particular vertical market. Home base office is where? Des Moines, Iowa. And so things are cranking away in Des Moines. Do they have a national rollout and then they bring on Arizona or how did that come about? So uh, one of our longest standing uh, clients as owner's representation, which is actually what Shift started out as, is Uh. actually kind of like owner's rep, CA, um, and they were actually a different company before it became Shift, was um, a large insurance company based in uh, Columbus, presence in Des Moines, and then a presence here. Gotcha. So um, Ah, so you followed the client into market. Yes, we followed the client here, and they actually had a large contract for a project up at Cavasson. 
and um, we can now guess. The client. Yeah, you can probably guess the client now. Right. Um, but oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, so we had a couple guys here that were doing owner's rep and uh, project management for them, and that gave us a presence in kind of a bank role in the area. Mm -hmm. And so they were already established here for three years and decided, okay, we have architecture in the two markets. Let's bring that on here and see what happens because mm -hmm. there's obviously continuous demand. Mm -hmm. But it was kind of that balance of, you know, when does that come on? When does that happen? And um, a visit back home kind of over a cold winter and talking to Zane, and it precipitated and uh, end up being me. So I was ready for a change. I was working for a different company outside of architecture and came back into architecture to do this and just felt like it's time for me. I feel like I could do something like mm -hmm. this and just create something totally different. Focus on my clients, focus on our partners, see what they want me to bring rather mm -hmm. than saying, here's a little box of stuff we provide and really you know, well, it's cool it that you guys started as an owner's rep because mm -hmm. the owner's rep really kind of gets involved. They mm -hmm. become one of the team and then they represent the group on behalf of so if you do that and then you also represent some of the scope, I'm sure that that makes you have a different seat at the table than traditional architecture. It's very, very different. Um, and one of the things that, that we get into is that we provide a lot of different services. So because we started out as real estate, owner's rep, project management, that's kind of you know where the beginnings, the kind of roots of, of shift really existed. And then it's expanded from there. We've got an architecture design, uh, construction administration. We actually have construction divisions uh, in Iowa and building one up in Ohio now. And it just kind of like snowballed out of there. And there's change management, all these other things where our clients just kept saying, hey, we're great. We love you in this capacity, but can you do more? Maybe we can just, can you just bring on more services? Mm -hmm. So we've only actually expanded to all these other things, this kind of like <laughs> mutant form of we can take on anything at the request of our clients. We didn't go out there and say, hey, let's do everything. Because anybody that does that is is probably crazy mm -hmm. um, because then it's hard to get really, really good at anything. But we just brought people on that are really hyper adaptive and flexible to say, yeah, I can handle this. I can do more. Mm -hmm. But that's really only because our clients keep saying, can you get can we get more services mm -hmm. from you? Mm -hmm. um, so it really wasn't a case of, yes, you know, we're going to try to be everything to everybody. Mm -hmm. It's like we have all these services and then our clients get to say, OK, we can really use you on owner's rep project management, maybe design. Or maybe it's just ownership. Maybe it's just design. Maybe it's just real estate feasibility studies. Maybe it's master planning. Mm -hmm. You don't have to pick, mm -hmm. you know, everything. So you it's follow like, your client regardless. Yeah, it's, it's always mm -hmm. about Let the client. Um, mm -hmm. And then it's kind of like this large sushi menu of potential mm -hmm. options. <laughs> well, then you're also sharing resources, right? So, so you you guys are, because it's 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 so well integrated, you guys are able to share resources across the different markets as well? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and that is a nice thing is when it came to analyzing what kind of market that that our office here wanted to do, honestly, I've worked in, I can't think of a vertical market I haven't worked in over the years. And that was always just me trying to force myself into an uncomfortable position of, I haven't done that before. Mm -hmm. Let's tackle it. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I've worked in medical, industrial, production, I did car dealerships for years, all kinds of random stuff, uh, schools, jails, courthouses, libraries, uh, higher ed. Actually, uh, Maricopa Community College District was one of my major clients for, I don't know, eight or nine years. Um, but it's one of those things where we have very finite resources in the other markets because they're very old. They're older and more mm -hmm. established groups. Mm -hmm. So in Columbus, they do a lot of higher ed and they do a lot of medical work. They do a lot of corporate work. And then in Des Moines, it's like corporate work and uh, residential. And then we do some K-12 out of there and another higher ed. Mm -hmm. um, and then when it came to here, it's like, what do you want to do, Well, What do you want to do? I, I can basically do anything. What, what do, do I want to do? do? What do I want to do? What, what do you want to do, do, do um, Oh, platypus. How long did they um, live? <laughs> 20 years? Five years? No, they're, I mean, they're moderate lifespan animals. So they're... <laughs> of course oh, you know. <laughs> it's kind of, about like a cocker spaniel, you know. Understood. Um, Sorry, I keep getting off on this platypus tangent. <laughs> um, but, you know, really it was one of those cases of I could come here and we kind of establish, you know, we're going to set up the office, what vertical markets we want to go into. And I just lay it out and like, let's just put 5% across the board mm -hmm. and see what lands and see what starts taking grip. And I worked very heavily in, you know, of course, corporate real estate has, has taken a big hit over mm -hmm. COVID. And, you know, that was kind of like a large majority of what we were doing nationally. Mm -hmm. So my job then became, let's go see what other markets we can stretch into. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, I like doing a little bit of everything. I have instinctively avoided the the kind of urge of most designers, firms to go, hey, we have a vertical, we're going to stick in it, we're going to get really awesome at it, and then anything out of that, we're just not going to touch. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like if you get too comfortable, you get somewhat 
complacent and you yeah. keep start regurgitating yeah, the same creative, solution. Creative. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and Which you get is... you get a creative rut. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas the fact that right now I'm working on uh, medical, working on ASC, I'm working on master planning, um, working on some cool GSA stuff. Too. I'm working on uh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, some corporate stuff. And then we have this project we're going to undertake with you guys, which mm-hmm. is this really kind of potentially hairy, but really <clears throat> rewarding fine. project for a nonprofit. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, you know, it's taking an older building and challenging it and trying to reimagine it. Buildings, mm-hmm. you know, 40 years old plus, um, and really coming in and saying, what can we imagine? This is how a nonprofit works now and really bring it into reality and and that's a really difficult and challenging thing but but the community it serves is really cool oh it's, like it's we absolutely saw with free fantastic arts, to see the kids and their paintings on the walls mm-hmm. and to see the space that it actually becomes and remembering when we walked that the first time the crazy atrium bright yellow building and now it's a gallery it's it's really cool yeah and it's it's probably that's you know one of my really really happy places is when the projects are done mm-hmm. going through and walking it when nobody knows who i am uh-huh. after it's been open for like a year and they probably changed over and there's a receptionist who has no idea who i uh-huh. am i just get to kind of wander through and kind of experience it alongside everybody else um and just kind of be part of the space rather than being the guy who spent months and mm-hmm. months and months with a team building right. it together mm-hmm. um to just kind of experience like everybody else it's very cool so it's rewarding to me so is that that I'm going to call it the conversion market because I can't think of a better word, but but it feels like Phoenix and the and the metro area is ripe for more vision and more people that are ready, willing, and able to to take on those types of projects. Is that a market that you guys see yourselves really capable of being successful in? Is it one that you're going to target? Is Des Moines like? Yeah, do that. I mean, like, like how, take how do, all those weird take, downtown buildings. Yeah, and find make them me cool. the ugliest duckling you can and turn it into a platypus. <laughs> platypus. Yes, yes. Uh, Mission go back accepted. to the platypus, like yeah. full circle again. Yeah. Um, but no, it's it's one of those things where it's kind of a weird dynamic that over the last, I want to say, like five to eight years, there's been this explosion of influx of capital into the valley, mm-hmm. where a lot of these older buildings, it was like you know maybe. 15 years ago, they thought, ah, you know, let's go to do a nice easy facelift. We don't feel like really digging the money into it because it might not be worth it in the long run to the surge of let's buy these older buildings right. and just raise them and then, you know, put in. Well, we're renovating of, for yeah. the first time, it feels like. As a kid growing up here, you yeah. just, it was, you didn't like it, you leveled it, you started over. Right. Or now we're renovating, we're or keeping sprawled, the structure. It's cool. Right? Yes. Right. And, or you just continue to sprawl, right? And, and it feels like there's a lot more focus on on rebuilding, you know, Keeping the, the red brick downtown, yeah. it's yeah. cool. Yeah, and I think it's largely because um, some of those more prime locations and those bigger projects have already occurred. Mm-hmm. So those are already in the ground. They're going up. They're kind of meeting that housing and, yep. and office demand. So that's leaving, okay, maybe it doesn't make sense to tear all these down anymore. Let's Do the try cool to stuff. reimagine mm-hmm. them. And that actually leaves behind what I like to call the hard stuff. Yeah. You know, it's not the low-hanging fruit anymore. Like, this building's clearly outlived its life. Yeah. We're going to buy it, raise it, start over. This one... You know, the, the bones in it are so good. Like this project, it's been really, really well maintained, mm-hmm. but it's just kind of at the it end is of what its it lifespan. <laughs> um, you know, so it's things like they didn't put a sprinkler system in it, yeah. got to put a fire alarm control panel, all these things that are... The not sexy stuff. Yeah, the kind of nasty stuff underneath. But in doing that, it gives us the opportunity to come in and say, let's do some capital investment. investment right? and really, mm-hmm. really change the game on it. So we're going to take this old building that nobody really... I've driven by it hundreds of times at this point um, and never really notice it to the point where people are going to drive by it and go, that you is, see it. That is different. You're yep. going to notice it, right? Mm-hmm. Which is really, really amazing, I think, especially for a nonprofit to have that kind of Absolute presence. exposure, yeah. Yeah. It's a big deal. So super different than downtown Des Moines. Um, <laughs> like, what did what do they think about that? What is what is the home office? It's like, all right, man, you're, you're, you're going nuts out here with these weird, you know, renovation ideas or is that something that, that is easy for somebody who's not local to grasp and catch on to. We do some, there is some renovation. Um, Des Moines is, is interesting because it was, um, it kind of hit this wave of renovation probably about 10 to 15 years ago, just because of kind of the age of the mm. initial infrastructure is a little mm-hmm. bit older. And then some of the larger buildings are undergoing that right now. Mm-hmm. So they're taking some of those buildings that were a little bit larger, like older factory buildings. And about 10 to 15 years ago, they hit that influx and turned them into, you know, office residential loss. They've seen their like wave. That. Yes, mm-hmm. they've seen it. So um, it's not something that is is unfamiliar to our team in Des Moines. And it's just what we have here is a totally different animal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They look at that and I show my team from Des Moines. Yeah, yeah they, 
restrooms and elevator and stairs are all outside. Outside. <laughs> Why? What? The what? <laughs> well, we don't have to worry about the snow right. quite so much. No. You know, you throw no. on a jacket. Maybe there's a little bit of rain, but you know, you're covered to get to your your needs. Um, but it is it is a really different beast to try and take something that has exterior circulation and exterior elevator enclose all that mm-hmm. kind of work with the structure of it and change the building mechanical systems all align with it that's a totally different set of variables mm-hmm. than just saying hey we're going to do a facelift on the inside of a building mm-hmm. so it's it's interesting but des moines is um is uh much like a, a, a reflection of what i am is that people we brought on are very apt to jump in and try different things we're all kind of like that seller doer model of like hey let's do this not because we've done it before Mm -hmm. but because it's interesting Mm -hmm. and i want to see what we can do with it and we're very kind of task and goal reward orientation of not like okay let's just crank this out and make some money you become more like a swat team like we get in there we do some really cool stuff pretty much Mm -hmm. is actually um largely what uh working with zane initially set up his office it's like we want we want to have a SWAT team, uh-huh. the basic you have people that are really, really hyper proficient in some areas that offset mm-hmm. one another so that we can come in small group. I mean, I'm not talking about this office here being 20. I'm talking mm-hmm. about being six, maybe mm-hmm. eight. Uh, and they're just really high, highly qualified individuals that want to work in different Find that capacities. Right project. <laughs> yeah. And just kind of work together and attack it from a different angle collaboratively uh-huh. rather than saying we have a bunch of, you know, vertical lone wolves that just have their support teams that right. we're all like cross working together. Business development, one of the things when I first met you, um, I think Sam Pinkle introduced us, if I remember yeah. right. Um, it was a really interesting way that you go about a, the business development piece. And I know we do it non traditional, and I didn't know that coming into this industry because I had nothing to compare it to. <laughs> and it kept saying, We do it so different. We do this so different. I'm like, Okay, I don't know how, but we do. But um, can you speak to that a little bit? I, I don't even feel Nick on it. How you like when you do like renderings instead of and that kind of thing oh, okay. instead yeah. of the investment other ways. So um, I guess I want to say like I'm, I don't want to lump everybody else into a big lump, but I'm sure. going to go ahead and Fair do enough. it anyway. But a prototypical business model, especially for like uh, A and D, is hey, let's have you know just the principals out there running on top, and they're going to you know they belong to the associations. They go golfing. Mm-hmm. They go to like the same little groups. You know they're the A and E golf league or whatever it is. But you tend to just end up spending time and money interfacing with the same like little groups of people and mm-hmm. then who also do what you do who also do what right. you do so you're like swimming in this school of, of the same fish trying to find yeah. something totally different it, it's that you get very limited exposure yeah. on it. it's a high school dance yeah exactly <laughs> um so what we do is a little bit different rather than spend a lot of time and resources on things that are kind of those prototypical you know we're going to spend a whole bunch of money to go to conventions and stuff where there's a bunch of other architects i'm going to take that what is our capital resource mm-hmm. and say Hey, let's just go out, market, meet some people, network. I say, hey, Steph, this is what we do. Do you have anybody that's looking for a little bit of a vision? It's really cool. And then, um, you know, you come and we say, yes, we have this mm-hmm. client that they're trying to put it together uh, actually kind of a lot like uh, our nonprofit is right now. Mm-hmm. They had some idea of what they wanted to do, but no vision for it. So what I'd rather do is take some of those hours, say, you know, two, three hours, whatever it would take money worth to go, take somebody out to lunch, go golfing, mm-hmm. you know, do a little bit of a presentation, a little dog and pony show. I say, okay, let's let's not do that. Mm-hmm. Spend some time, maybe grab lunch, get some coffee, get to know you, mm-hmm. get to know your project. And then I'm going to take those two or three hours worth of money. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you a vision of what we can do in two or three hours. It's cool. Yeah. So I take that money and well, we go. Well, can take that to the board. They can go fundraise with it. They right, can do right. something with that. And instead of just, just doing throwaway, here's, uh-huh. here is some kind the of investment dinner. towards. Yeah. <laughs> the state can't 44. take that to the board. Nope. Can't do that. <laughs> um, but what we can do is just sit down and do a really quick shred, do some quick renderings, do some quick drawings and say, we took a crack at it based on what I've gotten to know you over the last couple hours. Mm-hmm. This is a vision that I think might be able to work for you. And that generates so many more ideas mm-hmm. rather than just saying, we're just going to throw money away, mm-hmm. quote unquote, and do it the traditional way. Take that money, create something with it. If Very nothing cool. else, you've given it a shot. You've shown what you can do for them. And um, you're actually just kind of reinforcing what you do internally that this is all about the client. Well, you start the whole relationship with value, right? Absolutely. You brought value to them that you didn't ask them to dig into any pocket for it just said i'm going to use no. these resources to help you right out of the gates yeah because i would have spent that money anyway right mm-hmm. you know probably in doing stuff that has no <laughs> after the big dinner. investment yeah after the steak dinner <laughs> well, um and they get a look too at what what it's going to be like working with you mm-hmm. right? right which is like all right so because a lot of hesitation is like what's what's the relationship going to be like a, you know a, a project at, at any level is you know 
we exist to do hard things, right? That they're difficult. And so to look at something like that and to say, Hey, I want to work with this guy for the next two years. I want to like be around them. I mean, I think we have a little bit of a similar approach because, and, and I remember when I was first trying to explain how we do it, Steph was like, well, why are you telling them all this information? Shouldn't they like, shouldn't they pay for that? Um, or like, aren't you providing expertise that, that in theory somebody would pay for. And I think in, you know, it's like getting an estimate on or like, Hey, bring your cars broken, bring it in. And I, I'll charge you 300 bucks for an estimate. It's like, wow. we don't, we don't charge for estimates. Yeah. Uh, like I, that's not, you know, that's not something that, that we do. And so why wouldn't you want to start the relationship that way? And I think what it does is it, is it builds a rapport that in theory, you know, comes back, right? Mm -hmm. We're just looking for an honest relationship here because construction projects, design projects, you know, renovations, development, it's hard. And so, so you want to understand like that you're all going into it with the same set of goals and the same mindset. And so if, if I have to lose a little bit of, you know, expertise at the onset, if I have to spend a few hours doing a rendering mm -hmm. at, you know, at the onset, I think that's, you know, it's money well spent Absolutely. better than a steak dinner. I, I think it actually hits on a really good point too, is that working with us, um, I don't seem really like picky about who we work with, but mm -hmm. there's a certain personality type that's going to work with us a lot easier that mm -hmm. they are in a position where they want to learn. Mm -hmm. They don't want to just have, you know, the black cape architect come in and go, yeah, here, do this. And they don't really, if somebody comes to me and says, this is exactly what I want. Can you put it together for me? Might not be the best fit, but if it's somebody who wants to kind of be educated about the process mm -hmm. and understand why we make these decisions up front, and that's where I'm kind of willing to say, here, here's a little bit of capital investment up front. I'll explain why we do this and how we mm -hmm. create this vision and create that rapport. That's also a good litmus test up front to say, mm -hmm. okay. This is a humble learner. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is this somebody who wants to work with this? And they they look at this and if they look at the the visioning and the rendering and the in initial test and go, what, why did you do this? I mean, this if they come back and say, this is completely wrong, what were you thinking? You know, that's one side of the corner. If they come back and said, okay, you took a shot. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not right, but you're already putting in effort mm -hmm. into this. That's different. That's going to fall on the side of the coin that we mm -hmm. want to work with these mm -hmm. people. It's a really quick litmus test. Um, so that, That's a good point. Yeah. It's how do they respond to what we do? Ooh, that's a really good point. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because if they come in willing to go, hey, they brought an idea to us. It might have not have been right, but they only had this tiny little bit of information. Mm -hmm. yeah. Think of what would happen if we fully got together mm -hmm. on the same page. And likewise, if, if there's sooner in the process that we can stitch in the general contractor, the construction team, anyone else in their office and just learn more, learn more, learn more about where they want to be and what they want to do, that's that's all going to produce a better product. That's been, run. I would say, a positive outcome of the pandemic and the pricing surges that were a result of that in the construction world is we've always wanted to be involved really early on. And sometimes that's the case and sometimes it's not. But through this last period of time, the design build conversation, whether it's contracted that way or not, just the approach is there where our teams are getting a seat at that table when they're still in the design phase. And don't do this, do this from a cost perspective. It's been something I've watched you want to do for years. And now it's more often than not being approached that way, which is love. It's awesome. Well, and especially since, since the pandemic, and we were big proponents of this before, Honestly, like, like I've told you guys, I grew up swinging a hammer. Mm -hmm. my, my dad's a carpenter. His dad was a carpenter. I understand that that, that ultimately drives everything mm -hmm. in the end. And it's never more so than right now. We're in a position where I can design all day. And even if I have some idea of what's going on, I, I really don't. You guys are so much closer to it than I am. It's much easier to have you at the table rather than me designing and trying to value engineer and anticipate what's going right. on. It's, it's just changed too often, mm -hmm. too fast. It's way, way too fast. Right. And there's situations in the last couple of years where the owners have come back to us and said, okay, we put the bid set out. You know, it's X million dollars. We need to try and VE this. Mm -hmm. and I say, stop. Don't, don't do this. Bring on a GC. Mm -hmm. Do a design build. Let's see what real-time feedback is. And we'll kind of adjust there. Mm -hmm. But then we get into the cycle of, can we outrun the market with redesign? And mm -hmm. it'll tell you, no. Mm -hmm. Like, it, what's been happening in the last two years? No, we couldn't. Mm -hmm. Every time we redesign it and set it back out, it A went new up. element. Oh, everything would change again. Mm -hmm. And they look at me and say, why did it go up? Well, I don't have time. control over all this <laughs> stuff. It's just time. Mm -hmm. If we had just gone straight to a design build format, we would have been already done mm -hmm. and gone by now with mm -hmm. that other number that was quite a bit lower. I, mm -hmm. I hope the surges <laughs> don't continue, but I hope the approach does because it's a, it's a lot more fun for our teams too to feel like that piece of ownership, not just wait till the drawings slam on the desk and then bid it, build it, move on. It's it's a lot more. The collaboration piece is Oh, welcomed. absolutely. Um, and it's one of those things where it just, I feel like it should always be part of the conversation. 
And it's one of those things where I know a lot of GCs are kind of stepping in that role of saying, you know, we're, we're going to be the ones to bring on architects, designers, engineers to be able to control that a little bit better. But I think it's just kind of, it's this weird, I don't know, whether mm -hmm. the lawyers decided at one point, we're just going to drive a wedge between the two I know. and say, everybody get to your side of the fence. But, you know, this all comes from an older paradigm of master builders that were, you know, designers, builders working together. I think if we can find some way to get back closer to that mm -hmm. as more of a collaborative effort rather than saying, hey, let's, um, you know, architect, let's toss the, the GC under the bus and GC get ready to heave the architect under right. and see who gets under the wheels first. Who's in the least amount of trouble. Right. Yeah. Um, in the end, we're all kind of responsible and culpable mm -hmm. to deliver this product for um, right. the client, something they love, something they're proud of, and something that we all obviously look good delivering right. on. Mm -hmm. And I don't see any benefit to to the blame game. Mm -hmm. I really, really don't. Do you like that shift? Yeah. I mean, I, it's something that we actually were doing towards the end of what I'll call the initial boom, like pre-2008. It was very common, but it was common for a different reason. It, it was uh, the, the design build concept was more common because of speed mm -hmm. um, and and needing to get needing to push product out as fast as possible because the need was so right. large for product. The, it's becoming more popular now because of the market and speed for a different reason, needing to get, you know, design and items released to avoid long leads, to avoid, you know, the the ever changing, you know, price escalation. So the the, the result is the same, but the reason for doing it was different. In 2008, everything kind of like stopped. And then we went back to very traditional, you know, design bid build. And that was more from a, can I afford it? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I'm, I'm fine to spend the money in the architecture and then just close my eyes and, and hide in a hole when the contractor sends their price in because I probably don't have the money to build it anyways. Yeah. And so that, you know, so we kind of got away from it and we're getting back to it. So it almost, it seems to cycle with the market. Mm -hmm. It does. But hands down, it, it is the the right way to do business. And, and I think even even to a client that that is not, I mean, it's not their job to be educated in the process, right? Mm -hmm. They're doing other things. That's whether the client and not the builder or the <laughs> architect, right? Yeah. But for, for a client to sit in a room and not have an understanding really of what we do every day and to hear us have a conversation mm -hmm. about something, it might be a, a footing design. It, it might be, you know, well, what if we switched this, this direction or that direction just to have that conversation? It's got to be peace of mind. That's all you want from mm -hmm. your team, right? Like you want to hear them like scratching on each other to understand like, okay, what's the, so what's the right way to build this? And I think, you know, unless you're some sort of dark hearted person, you can't help but love being a part of that type of process. And so you see people then start to care about your project, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm yes. Mr. Client, now I'm, I'm, I'm looking at Asa digging into this design. Oh, I think the footing should look like this. And this is why. And the contractor saying like, yeah, but, um, you know, I can't physically put it in this way. And this is why. So what if we did this? And what if we did that? And then you start to hear people, you know, still covering their own bases, but caring about the project and caring about the guys they're going to put it together, caring about the hours it's going to take to design. Absolutely. And that kind of stuff. I mean, how can you ask for anything else, right? I mean, that's your value. And, mm -hmm. and that might be a, a one hour meeting, you know, at some point in time, but the value is is immeasurable. And so getting people in the room, I, I mean, mm -hmm. and I don't really know, I mean, I don't know why anybody wouldn't want to do that, you know? And that's, so that's what we bump up against is to me, it just feels so blatantly obvious that you should put the contractor in the room. I'm a little biased towards contractors, <laughs> but, but I, I don't know why you wouldn't do that, you why know? And, take and the free expertise. Basically, <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't know uh, how to even charge for that. It's like, yeah, you want to come to a meeting and, and like chat with us about this. Now, once we're on board, it's the value is a lot better. Sure. But like an initial concept meeting, mm -hmm. why wouldn't we talk about it? Mm -hmm. Like, I want to know how you want to put it together because how else am I going to put together a competent price? Uh, right. How we put it together matters. And, and it's a huge time saver as well. Like, like the days of a brick wall between us where you're over there drawing and you think you're doing a really great job and then you huck it over the fence and I catch it and I look at it I'm like, ooh, I don't want to price it this way. Mm, so I'll price it that way because I don't think you did a great job. And then I throw it back over the fence. You're like, oh, stupid contractor. Like, uh, I mean, like, that's so stupid. <laughs> well, time, you money, know, and that process. Why not cut a hole in the wall and just talk about it for an hour mm -hmm. and right. now we're on the same page. And exactly. so, I, I mean, it, it's, it's not a, you know, it's not a earth shattering concept. But for some reason, the desire to keep the wall between the architect and the contractor has just always been a thing. And I think that somewhere, maybe a lawyer or somebody, I don't know, put it in, a, in, in the original owner's head, like, if these guys like each other, you're going to get screwed. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that, that's the exact opposite of what happens. Right, right. And we run into that too. It's um, if we say, hey, we like working with this general contractor, immediately some clients, like the hair on the back of their neck stands up and they're like, okay. You're going to gang up on me. Yeah, somebody mm -hmm. is, somebody's yeah, like getting their close. back scratched yeah. and you guys are getting yeah. along too well, like. 
No, it's just because we know how to work through yeah. this process. Um, and honestly, we get some pushback from that on us being, you know, like designer, architect, and owner's rep mm. on the same job, you know. And it's not something that we force on anybody. We say, hey, yes, you know, we have a division for owner's rep, design, and then construction administration. Mm -hmm. Those could all be provided by our own company. A lot of times it's like, nope, separation, church and state, you can't do that. But what they don't realize is, that's a good equation because we know value. each other so yep. well. You you know how to run. Yeah. You know how to pass the baton. You we know, we mm -hmm. know each other so well and we know how to work in that mm -hmm. dynamic so well. And honestly, nobody is harder on you than the guy <laughs> right next to you you've been working with for, you know, six years. It's very true. That knows, hey, I know your work. You know better. I you know better than this. <laughs> you can do better than this. And and honestly, a lot of, you know, that kind of it's a brother sister thing. It's call it you out on your shit. It is. Yeah. There, there's no holding back internally right. if somebody screws up somewhere in that yeah. kind of dynamic, and the owner only has to like, well, wring one neck, and you know, it's just sure. their owner's rep going, "Hey, okay, we we dealt with it," mm -hmm. and they don't need to see how the sausage was made behind. <laughs> they don't need to see the, um, you know, the internal squabbling between right. the siblings to make it happen. Right. And we're happy to add, you know, the GC into that and say, let's just get on the same page together, mm -hmm. and then the owner only really has to kind of direct one entity rather than creating more silos right. between. It just it doesn't make any sense yeah. to me. Mm -hmm. So there, there's the expectation that you're going to get a little more, and I think that that bar is is there for a reason. I think that's realistic. But you know, if, if there is that closeness, that team mentality, I think there's the expectation that you're going to get a little more. So your clients, for example, probably have the expectation that I'm going to get a little more out of the architectural team, right? Maybe I'm going to get my CDs a little faster. Maybe I'm going to you know get a little bit of of uh, fee relief or something. Like th I think there's the expectation, right, wrong, or indifferent. You're going to get a little more out of a collaborative team, but the reality is, is it's also more efficient. And so there probably is a little bit more there, but for some reason, you know, it's just kind of been more industry standard to want to separate everybody, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I mean, not to continue to use sports references, but you know, the, the teams that have been together the longest mm -hmm. are always the ones that are the most successful because yep. they can anticipate, yep. you know, each other's Past moves. They can ice. get hard <laughs> on a guy that misses a block. They, you know, like they, they can do whatever, you know, you've got that comfort, you mm -hmm. know, when, when it's like anything else, if you're new to a relationship, if I'm working with you for the first time, there's a learning curve. Absolutely. And if we were to build the same project two times, mm -hmm. I mean, it's obvious that mm -hmm. it's going to go better the second time, right? Regardless of how well it goes the first, there, there's a, there's an understanding and anticipation and, a, and just a rapport. Lessons learned, yeah. 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 I think that's also part of the education process too is we forget, honestly, as people who build design constantly, that a lot of these owners, they've never done this before. And they'll never do it again. And they'll never do it again. It's so, a one and done. Exactly. There's a whole lot of education needs yes. to take place to get them to understand why we do these processes rather than just saying, this is what we do and this is how we've always done it. Yeah. That, you know, that doesn't that doesn't help them understand why we need to have the pre-construction meetings right. and why we're sitting down and I say to them, hey, we're at, we're at um, you know, we're at 60 to 80 percent DD. We need to have a sit down with your potential contractors. Or if you have one in mind, let's sit uh, down with them. Like, well, shouldn't we wait till the design sound like, no, mm -mm. I need that we have feedback momentum. Loop now and kind of educate them on that. And that's where it goes back to kind of selecting the clients that are willing to say, okay, yeah, I need to be educated. I have not done this. Does Even, it boil down to trust? It does. Everything yeah. boils down to trust. Yeah. Um, and, and honestly, some of the more difficult clients are the ones that have done it once, maybe yes. twice. Everybody's uncle's done it, right? <laughs> yeah. or, or they have a brother, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They got a brother, they got a friend. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, they, you know, they maybe they did a bathroom remodel in their house. Totally. Oh, yeah. It didn't go quite Same so team. well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so then they kind of come in with like, I, you know, I can definitely do this, yeah. um, you know, and, and in all honesty, yeah, you know, they have some experience, but I can't even quantify how many projects I've worked on over the duration of my life and my career. And honestly, how many mistakes I've made over my life and my career. I'm, sure. I'm one of these people that I freely admit if on the balance of probability, I'm going to hope that I'm right, but always kind of hold back and say, I, there's a very good potential I could be wrong here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and not just assume that I'm right in every condition. Because mm -hmm. honestly, I'll sit down and we'll draw, say like masonry details, just something like that will come in. It depends on the environment, depends on you know where the standards are moving, what the products are doing. And if I send it to you and you're like, and this is not really what we're doing anymore, and your mason sends back, says, Let, we need to look at this differently, I'm going to defer to him because he has way more expertise in that than I do Sure, whatever. We're the architectural design team, mm -hmm. but he does that a hundred percent of the time. Mm -hmm. That is six percent of That's my the job. humble learner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. you ha you have to be willing mm -hmm. to do that. I think in all capacities to make a good team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. So it's it's a balance. So Arizona, to just kind of wrap us up, what what I hear you saying you really want those niche projects in Arizona, but what else? So what what would you like anybody to know about shift in Arizona market? 
See, I mean, I think realistically, I don't even know if you can call it an, a niche niche project. It's kind of like, um, what do we want to be in Arizona? We've right. talked about this a lot. Yeah. And as a, you know, quote unquote, upstart company in Arizona, I've been here for 16 years at this point. Mm -hmm. So I know the Valley pretty well. Um, a lot of people have worked with me in one capacity or another. Mm -hmm. Do they like you? Mm, <laughs> most of the time. Um, I, think so. I like thanks, you. Thanks for so putting me on the spot, first. Steph. Um, no, it's one of those things where I'm, you know, uh, I, I'm an Iowa farm kid. I'm really kind of just who I am. Th this is what, you, what get. you get. Mm -hmm. You always, you always get this. I'm yeah. always like this. Mm -hmm. So if you do have a disagreement with me or something isn't right, I really want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And even if we don't see eye to eye, at least then we can find some reconciliation of why it's not, you know, kind of working out. But sure. that starts in the beginning and building trust immediately and saying, hey, this is, this is Ace of Plum. This is what you get when you're working with me. Mm -hmm. This is my team. If we mess up, we're going to own it and we're going to find a way to make it right and go mm -hmm. forward. Um, but that being said, what does Arizona want to be and what do we want to be here? It's we want to be a, I, I want to say this word with some hesitancy is boutique. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we struggle with the same word because I hate the word boutique, and but I, I like what it means. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I like we, this, we, mm -hmm. we don't want to be like when you say boutique, everything immediately goes, oh, crap. Super that's teeny gonna, tiny. It's going to be buy, tiny. It's going to cost me more. Buy tchotchkes yeah. in there. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, no, it's more like we want to grow, develop, and evolve with our clients and yeah. what they want us to be. Um, I don't want to come into this market and say, you know, nope, we're going to do this. I'm going to go attack um, ASCs because, heck, I could do an ASC. We can stamp them out go one right after another. I know that's a market that you guys are good at. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it's not one of those things where I ever want to get in a position of being comfortable and just saying, we're just going to hit this right. and just keep doing it that right. way. At the same time, I can't constantly be trying to ice skate uphill. Sure. So it's kind of a balance of mm -hmm. picking those challenging projects. Leverage expertise, but keep the creative knife yeah. sharp. We have to keep a little bit of our you know creative mm -hmm. juices flowing because I want our people to be happy, growing, changing, mm -hmm. and evolving, and not get too comfortable in saying we're just going to do say yeah. parking garages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I we can probably make a nice little business out of it. That works right. great. But on the other hand. I don't know that I can sell that to my internal team and them being happy mm. saying another parking garage. Yay. That's why they won't let two pilots fly together. Really? Often. Right. You don't want the comfort of the person next to you. You want to make sure that you're holding each other accountable to safety. Pro yeah. Calls. We're pretty good Different at holding each other but... accountable. Mm -hmm. You know, and usually that's kind of like this internal, uh, this weird thing with designers is that we always have to be like kind of one upping a little bit better than mm. the rest. It's kind of how we're, we're trained in design school. But I, I like that the idea, the paradigm of, it's challenging one another and holding each other accountable to make the other person better than you. Mm -hmm. So for me, when we're looking to bring on staff and everybody's like, well, who do you want to bring on? And my immediate response is, I want to bring on somebody that's going to make me look completely yeah. stupid. Yep. Like bring on somebody that is going to surpass me. Run circles around me. Exactly. Yes. That's what I'm hoping for favorite. is that somebody comes in and says, I have this vision. I want to do this. I'm like, great. It's better than your idea. Yeah. Heck let's yes. find a way to do it together. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. Like the idea of being the smartest person in the room. If you ever feel like that. Time to go. Time to go. Bring Time to find a bigger room. room. Yeah. Bring more people in <laughs> yeah. because you need to be kind of building and accelerating and push each other a higher level. I love that. So um, what do we want to be what right now? Be? Um, I want to really stabilize uh, our office because right now we're pretty small and growing up. We have mm -hmm. the support of the other two offices. But um, projects like uh, the one we're doing, it's a remodel, uh -huh. a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of guts to it. It yeah. takes a real on the ground, like hand in hand work with the client, with uh, the, the general contractor, with the subcontractors, mm -hmm. yes. with the inspectors. I love City of Phoenix inspections. Um, you know, there's a lot of those things that all have to happen at the same time. And that is a good way to demonstrate how we approach work, mm -hmm. no matter what. So, right now, uh, I think the focus is really to put some emphasis on how we work and let that play out in a couple mm -hmm. of different projects. And then, of course, it's being sustained by, you know, projects in other markets. I'm honestly working in like seven states right now. And some of it's master planning on the very front end. Mm -hmm. And some of it's small TIs, like the gambit in between. It's right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're building what's coming in the future. But it's one of those things of, you know, I'm kind of willing to take on just about anything right now, mm -hmm. just so it kind of fits with where I want my, my team mm -hmm. to evolve into over time. Right. Um, and who that team is, it's still kind of yet to be determined. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's kind of the beauty and the complete terror of starting what, what is a, you know, new all It's a startup new with infrastructure, right? Mm -hmm. right. It is. It, it was a very unique opportunity for me that um, I've been here for 
I say about 16 years mm -hmm. and worked with a lot of different firms, a lot of different clients, a lot of different GCs. And I got this opportunity to say, hey, let's let's start something totally new. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be like the other offices. We have to mesh with culture, which is actually really easy because we all have a very similar cultural approach, but we don't have the restrictions of saying we have all these mouths to feed and mm -hmm. all this expertise I can get to draw from the other offices and kind of build what I want with it. Mm -hmm. So good. it's it's a really cool opportunity and it's um it keeps me up at night sometimes, just as the challenge of it, but mostly it's the excitement of what can I do with it tomorrow. Right. Love Very it. Very cool. Yeah. Well, I'm thanks. not sure how long. Can we talk about platypus a little bit more? <laughs> totally. Platypi. Let's close with platypies. <laughs> so, Pies. so uh, sorry, the the whole, it, it was just one of those things where over time, um, you know, people kind of asked me to describe what my, uh, what my design and personality style is and like. I've grown up completely immersed in uh, design, construction, mm -hmm. uh, my entire life. My earliest memories are literally of pushing bubbles out of linoleum and before I could walk. My dad swears I shouldn't remember this and walking in between studs as, as the buildings are going up and catching trusses as I got older. I was, mm -hmm. you know, doing roofing when I was in third grade. Of course. You know, what else like would you that. be doing? That's, you know, because that's how my dad <laughs> learned. So, um, and then in high school, it's like you know, we're, we're building these big pole barns and you, you know, you're flipping a truss that is 40 foot, you know, to the eve and then you're out in the middle trying to catch the next one. Oy. It's, you know, a 40 foot drop to uh. concrete below. I'm Who's a boy mom. That? This is hard to hear. Yeah, I know. Let's let's put the high schooler out there who is totally. super nimble, super agile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was that was my job. What could go wrong? Next. Yeah, what could go wrong? A lot. <laughs> um, fortunately, nothing went wrong. Good job. And uh, right. you know, but it's always one of those things where I've I've been immersed in it my entire life, uh -huh. and then went uh, initially for engineering, switched to architecture, kind of like took on all the aspects, and I want to understand and what's going on in the room, not just the architecture, but mm. what are all the supporting pieces behind mm -hmm. it. You have to consider all that. And I kind of get a little bit, you know, twitchy at, at designers who can't hang a, a ceiling light in their mm. own house. It's like, please. Care more. Learn care. A little, yeah, care and learn a little bit more about the the back end of what happens. I know you guys both went to Iowa State two years apart. Is everyone at Iowa State as nerdy as both of y'all in all this? I, I feel like everyone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like yeah. there's a pretty significant <laughs> level of nerd. I, I don't know that it's about the. It's I not, was cool there. I don't know that it's about the school. I think it's about the area and where most people grew up that went there. Gotcha. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's a, it's you know, it's the Midwest. So there's a. I grew up on a farm as well, and so it's like you know, I'm doing the same thing, right? Scooping um, animal excrement in my diapers. You know, I mean, like <laughs> yeah. it, it was, it, it was just kind of that work ethic, mm -hmm. and I think. I think there's an understanding that when you go into an engineering or an architecture, I went through the engineering school, um, that you you just kind of want to know how things work. Yeah. Um, there wasn't a Christmas that went by without me getting some sort of Lego uh, or something, yeah. you know, that I could I could put together, and then I would take the instructions and throw them away and like stack up something that I thought was cooler. Um, <laughs> now, kudos to Lego; they've gotten cooler. Uh, <laughs> I Which still play have. with them. Uh, but it's, you know, it's just, I don't know. I think it's a work ethic and a mentality that part of the country kind of breeds. Mm -hmm. And so there were more nerds than not nerds. How about that? Yeah, we, we talk about this a bit in the office. It's, um, you know, when you grow up in a, a very rural situation on a farm, it's not like you're immediately able to run to the store and get a solution for everything. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you just have to make it work what you have laying around. So you're always kind of improvising and designing and working and building saying, well, that piece of equipment broke. Let's see what we can fabricate, put together to do the same job. Um, and it was one of those things of just making do. And it's mm -hmm. very much ingrained in the rural community. Mm -hmm. I know I can't speak for anyone else, but in the, in the Midwest, it's just kind of part of life. Figure it out. And everybody's kind of a, a doer builder because that's what you've got to do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I love that. So no. well, thank you for joining us. That was, that was fun. Oh, that's the end. That's the end. It can okay. be the end. Sorry. Keep going. Boop, boop. You've got All more. The time. <laughs> you've got time for a lot of